Yo, what is up folks, Travis G here, and take a look at Elves in Timeless. Again, another deck with a bunch of Modern Horizons 3 upgrades. Um, that was already really, really good. We've got Natural Order, which is legal in the format, means you can go grab Crate Hood Behemoth at any time, and kind of accelerate that out with a mixture of Elves. We've even got Deathrite Shaman, which we get to play with Fetchlers. Like, the deck was already really, really good. Allosaurus Shepherd, just incredible win condition as well, that also makes all your spells uncounterable, so hey. Um, just really, really cool shell, but a couple of new tools. Um, firstly, Priest of Titania, uh, one in a green for a 1-1, one, one, taps out green for each elf on the battlefield. Uh, in Historic, I really like this with Tyvar, but in this format, Timeless, where things are a bit, a bit, more, a bit more powerful, um, we, and we have Natural Order in particular, um, I don't think you need to do that. We can be a little bit more consistent, have more elves. Um, we then also have Eladamri Korvakdal, uh, one green green for a 3-3. Three, three. Look at the top card of your library any time, cast creature spells from the top of your library. Um, so not just elves, so if you end up like, hitting Crate Hip off the top, you also get to do that. Uh, and then green tap two untapped creatures you control to reveal a card from your hand or the top card of your library. And if you reveal a creature card, put it onto the battlefield. Again, that gives us like a little elvish piper for Crate Hip Behemoth kind of effect there. Um, obviously, you do need to tap two creatures to do that, but hey, that's still really, really solid. And then probably the biggest addition alongside Priest Titania, and really, really good with Priest Titania, is Wirewood Symbiote. Uh, green for a 1-1, return an elf you control to its owner's hand to untap target creature. It is a once per turn effect, but we can make a bunch of mana off Priest Titania, and there are some cool things to, to return as well. Um, obviously we have like Leaf Crab Visioning, which lets us kind of like draw cards. We have Shaman of the Pact to return, which lets us kill our opponent. And we also have Sky Shroud Lookout. We're kind of playing this over Elvish Visionary. It's an arena-only card um, for all the gym start sets, but say it's one green for a 1-1. Reach. So the reach ability already is like, okay, cool, nice. Um, and it's actually a really nice one we can actually cord for versus some decks you know, if we're in some rough spots. But rather than just draw a card, it seeks an elf card, which almost gets, well, certainly gets us something to kind of like carry on going off with. Generally, it's like, okay, I'm going to untap my Priest of Titania, give myself a bunch of mana, maybe I have Leaf Crab Misery in play or, El or El Damry in play, get myself something to like uh, keep casting through, keep drawing more cards. Um, and Sky Scout would uh, look out. Guaranteed to hit an elf, which is really nice. And then, yeah, you can keep doing that. Eventually, later on, you'll hit another Wildwood Symbiote. Bounce the uh, Sword Actual Lookout again. and tap the Priest again. Have even more elves. Keep making mana with. You kind of get the idea. Holding everything together. Obviously, we have Natural Order. This fetches Crater Hoof most of the time. Um, but can find you, like, uh, the, like, Elvish War Master you need to kind of go off with if need be. We don't have access to... Um, Azuri in this format, whereas you would do a modern. I do have a modern elf list on my mox field if you're interested in that kind of stuff as well. Maybe we get Azuri at some point, but for the time being, like we've got War Master effects, we have Pretty and Hiff, that's kind of what the plan is. Um, and yeah, Quarter Calling again, holding everything to another card account, holding everything together. Um, finds us the Ella Damry when we need it, finds us the Priest when we need it, the Y was in by kind of lets us carry on kind of going off. And one other addition for MH3 is Disciple of Freya Elise. This is like a double face card, comes into play untapped if you pay three life. Um, we're only playing actual 16 lands our deck and then two of these. But when it enters the battlefield, you can sacrifice another creature. And if you do, you gain X life and draw X cards, with X that creature's power. It's six mana, it's like a nice, like, hey, sometimes you cast this and draw some cards off of it. And the life game can actually help in a tough spot as well. So you've got Lord's here powering our creatures up. Normally, it's drawing a couple of cards. You're not sacrificing something huge, but it is nice in a situation. Obviously, when it's it's going to be slammed. Um, so, okay. With that in mind, 16 lands, we've got 10 green fetches with two overgrown teams, two forests, one nurturing peat land, and of course the Besagey. Um, and uh, yeah, very, very solid, pretty tight shell. Um, and uh, I'm going to take this into some best of one at time that's right. If you're not ready, please do subscribe to the channel. Really appreciate it. all the algorithm stuff, like, share, all those, all those bits of pieces. Helps me out a ton. Uh, and I'm also currently streaming this live on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash tr3vtcg. Uh, so if you're interested in that, you want to ask me questions live, um, then also check that out. Yeah, going to hop into some matches. And there's not always a great resources either, which makes it like not a sole thing. Point is the place, hand is a bit slow, but we do have double priest of in here with the leaf crab engineering, with a way to untap the priest. And so we're going to keep it and kind of see how, see how it goes. Immediately we are playing, uh, that was basically, this is basically one of the best draws we could have had actually. Um, we will, I think, thatch here. I'm just gonna, f our lifestyle does not matter at all. We're playing Ace Goblin Char Belcher, uh, if you're not familiar. Double face cards, there's a bunch of more of them in Modern Horizons 3, um, which have led to this deck being very good, like a lot more consistent, and um, it is being played quite a lot. I will absolutely um, cover it at some point soon. Uh, if not this week, when this comes out, probably next week, but afterwards. 
an eye out for that, I guess. Belcher, Belcher, Belcher. Which core talisman actually tutors for it, which actually puts a relatively high clock on us. Um, so we need to put a preset into play. Um, if we do this and make the shepherd, we're still like a turn away, effectively, um, or potentially a turn away. Which means we might just might just get rolled. They're on fourteen though. They're making our job a little bit easier. You try and unblur my camera. Um, hopefully, there we go. All right, so precepts for three at the moment. We obviously have a Lord effect. We have another priest. It's whether they can kill us next turn, uh, which basically comes down to how many dark rituals they have in hand. Uh, and the might so might be they can kill us now. Um, so, hey, talisman. Only what's in play. It's only one mana to actually use it to wish. So if they have another dark ritual here, that'll take them to five mana, six, seven, which is what they need. They're going to search here. They can also be searching for a dark ritual, which will then take them from um, four mana here to six mana. Hmm. What could be like some kind of tutor effect? I don't know. Demonic tutor also leave on this format. Oh, the channel. That gets there. Assuming they have the Char Belcher, they can then activate it. And we will take 49. And that, welcome to the timers. This is Charlie. Right. Match where we got belched. Can we do any better? Match two. This hand has the Crayer in the opener, which is not what we want to see. Uh, and it also has like no acceleration. So we will go ahead and mulligan that. Um, this looks good. I think I'll put a land on the bottom. Uh, on the bottom of the overgrown team. Just so we can fit a little bit. Blood Crypt. Oh. We get Belcher into Grief Scam. This is the actual timeless experience. I swear the format's fun. I promise. I promise the format's fun to play. You'll enjoy it. You won't get, like, Belcher into Grief reanimated every game. Except when you do. Um, so, here we are again. Uh, they probably take the Aladamri here at this point, but they might take the Alasaur Shepherd. Yeah, they do. Alright, well. Jokes on you, I true death right, Shaman. Rolled. Uh, we'll find our own team. It's not the end of the day. Like, it depends what they have in hand, obviously. If they're like, next cards are then Fury reanimate, then like, yeah, sure. Probably pretty GG. I'm trying to think about the two drops that they actually play. Probably like Bowmasters. Fortune does not go to Apparat Shaman. Just gonna, just gonna surveil a little bit, get some information. Right, reanimating Aladamri is also pretty cool. Uh, this is an interesting one. I guess I will play this as I go. But this Opal of Fire Leaves might get used here, depending on how the game goes. Um, so they have a reanimate. We have Creatures to Exile. No attacks. I'm going to use Deathrite to gain a little bit of life this time, probably. I gain one life overall, because I'll fetch a forest. Uh, Exile there. I should probably exile an Eladamry actually, so they don't get to do that. But they, they might just reanimate our Deathrite Shaman team. That could also be a line. Um, looting. I'm curious if they're playing these cards in the Phoenix package. They are playing them in the Phoenix package, okay. They, they might not have the resources to get to this, but. Uh, I'm going to pay three life here so we can cord for one. Um, which is tricky, but we can get Deathrite Shaman and that'll stall a lot. Depends. They have Strike It Rich if they have two more spells. Um, like if they have... Sh right, Lightning Bolt me. Sure. You have another spell you can cast off of the Strike It Rich. If not, you'd be kind of a uh, meme, right? Alright, cool. That will bring back the Phoenixes in their graveyard, which are now there. Um, that is that is game. So... Lost to Belcher, lost to Scam. It was a good Scam hand as well. Sorry, not a good Scam hand. It, it was a good Scam hand. It was a good uh, mm, Belcher hand too. Alright, we've got the creative in hand again. We've got no no actual mana creatures. We'll put this back. And we'll go ahead and keep this. 
This hand, we have the natural order. I feel pretty good. I'll put the shaman on the bottom. And uh, should be okay with this. They're on Luris. Probably means some kind of Rakdos deck. I mean, hoping we don't get scammed, but certainly could get scammed. We'll also have a scam video coming soon. I recorded with like just the normal Phoenix deck um, earlier last like last week. The video of that up on the channel. Shameless plug here. Exclamation mark YT for the YouTube. Uh, Marsh Blats. Oh, it, it could easily be energy actually as well. That's a Temple Garden. Okay, Ocelot Pride. Neat. Um, this is his first, right? Don't, run, don't attack into it for the meme. Uh, we have probably sit in here. So this only returns elves to untap. So we can untap this, but we have to we have to basically bounce it. Right, it looks like you can activate it, but you cannot do that. <laughs> All right, overgrown team. They're gonna come into the red zone. I'm gonna say that that's fine. And then what else have we got here? In Abzan colors, there's a bunch of pretty cool stuff you can do. Um, I wonder if they're doing like. Sam wise like food stuff. That's a birthing ritual. Okay. I'm gonna read this card. Um being your answer, if you control a creature, look at the top seven, you can then sacrifice a creature if you do you put a card with mana value X or less, where X is one plus the sacrifice creature's mana value. So let's look at the top seven and put something two or less into play. This card, very, very sweet. I say that immediately they miss or decide not to activate it, so okay. We'll, 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 we'll take that under advisement here. Okay, so we can go uh, Death Right Shaman, add green, use this, uh, untap this by bouncing the Death Right, add ooh, green, go green. Mm. The current isn't actually lethal here. Hang on. I'm gonna do some stuff. We can go Death Rite again. We can go Eladamri. Play this. I'm sure I knew what the text said on what was on, on on the other card. This is tapped for T. I think we just say go. I mean. And then we can actually load for Crate Hoof. And then the Crate Hoof is lethal, which is the important thing. Whereas the Crate Hoof there would have been like, oh, I'm going to hit you for six. Um, yeah. There are a couple of like smaller Crate Hoof cards that uh, would also be decent. Ah, Necrogoyf. Necrogoyf. Alright, what do we got? We're we gonna sacrifice. Get the Goyf away, and we're gonna get the. They don't have City's Blessing for Ocelot Pride yet, but they're not that far away from getting it. You can play Voice Resurgence for this card. That seems pretty cool as well. There's some stuff. I've not seen a Voice Resurgence, even an Explorer for very, or Pioneer for a very long time. I've not thought about. Oh, okay. That kills the Priest. That's good. But we can actually uh, untap priest by returning it. It, it doesn't act a hundred percent solve the problem. Uh, it kind of does. Uh, if we use this ability, that's something I wanted to do. Wait, let's say the thing on huh? Oh no, yeah, it's, if it's a creature, I was like, it doesn't let you do that. So, they have actually some their graveyard. Uh, I 
Alright, it depends if they have a bow masters or not. Or bow masters or what. We need to protect the priest to be able to get the mana for this. Um if we'd like drawn well we guess we knew we weren't gonna draw a land. We have a land coming as well. As long as we can avoid dying here, we should hopefully get there. Need to be a little bit careful about letting them gain life too. Okay, new birthing rituals roughed as well. Uh, that gives them city's blessing. Tough. This is a tricky one where actually, uh, yeah, if they go to combat, we can do a weird thing where we block and then bounce the creatures to stop them getting damage. That way they don't get in life, that way they don't get to trigger the Ocelot's pride ability. I'm just hoping we can keep our stuff in play from them. Ooh. That is a one drop. Okay, Halo Might's fine. I think. Second one. And we tell you honest with you, I was like, oh, that's my Elder Dime Room. I was like, wait a minute, this isn't a crate of the hammer. It just gets one. That's not how that works. Elves player, by the way. Alright, let's go to my turn. Um, I'm sure there's a, if there's a dried up to get this, would be cool. But uh, I'm just going to make a cool mana here. Yeah, the big guy. Make a probably lethal attack. Yeah. We might just the last part a little bit. Bow Master is super annoying for elves, as you might imagine. Um, but hey. It's all good. It's um, it. but uh it's like uh rather than using green screen, I'd rather just like add a couple of bits and pieces. It's been um blank since I moved in. I did have a couple of different MTG art things that are actually up in north somewhere. We'll keep this. You got death right without the fetch, which is awkward, but not impossible. And then we've got priest on turn two. The death right's a bit of a magnet by itself anyway. Oh okay, we drew a fetch line. Okay, that's good. This is Belcher, just so we're all on the same page again. Okay. Oh, it's not Belcher. I saw the bog up bog and just have been like tricks. This is mono black scam, um, or mono black necro opponents, necro dominance. Uh, we drew the crater hoof. It's awkward. Yeah, I've just been so so conditioned to like seeing this and being like, oh, Belcher. Hmm. That one rings pretty good though. Be a bit careful. Um, so we can do this. We only have one land activation at the moment to use with this, but I think we should just put the Wild Wisdom into play. If the Death Rite's not doing anything at the moment, then um, we can bounce it kind of freely with the Wild Wisdom Moat. It's because of like, okay, what interaction and removal do they have? Do they have Grief? Do they have Necro? So they have um, March, obviously. Uh, it costs one and you get a some cards from your hand. The thing with Necro Dominance is that you have to discard down to five. <laughs> Most didn't have to that to play, so those are the Dark Ritual out. Well, like, hey, they have like Grief Scam stuff going on. And depending on what we draw, we might even be able to get up to the, the eight mana for Critting Hoof. Okay, they're going to go ahead and take that. We're going to untap uh, this by bouncing this. It's a nice upside of why it's in white, is you get to protect things a little bit. I'm going to push death right. That's fine, to be honest. I mean, quite and quite fine. This is indestructible. Do not under any circumstances try and besiege it with it. Um, just so that we're all on the same page. Uh, and yeah, we're going to replay this. Yeah. Um, Core one not doing a lot, but we do get to attack with the symbiote, and they are taking a couple of damage off the wandering. Right? Uh, 
New Dark Ritual just dropped. What have we got? Oh, we've got Sheldred. Sheldred's pretty good. Okay. Sheldred plus the One Ring is a little bit of a combo. With a bit of a combination. I think it's getting a bunch of life here. We need to uh, put some pieces together. I hope they don't have like a fatal push for the priest. Okay, I didn't take the great half, which is okay. I'm gonna play this out. Um I'm going to call for two here. I'm going to go ahead and find the Seek card. Seeking, not drawing a card, unfortunately. Alright, we did Seek a card. Then we're going to bounce this thing. Oh, cancel. We're then going to bounce the non set. So we're going to bounce the lookout to untap the looking at Priest. Okay, we can then cast this. We'll cast this, but we should probably just hold the Shaman. Um, yeah, force them to take the stream out of our hand. So I'm going to seek again with this thing. Okay. We're at 15. If we get to keep some priests in play, then we're doing pretty well. But uh, there's a decent chance they can find a way to clear our board off. It should be unfortunate. Yeah. There's also a deck that's going to be playing Bowmasters, like, it's going to be beak of the... Yeah. We can at least fizzle that, but uh, hey. That's somewhat limited in terms of mana and stuff. They're going to kill one of the priests here. Okay. It's tough. Kind of gonna happen. Where you can take the Titania or we can take the Shaman of the pack. Other of those things. The secret here is that the Leaf Crown Visionary doesn't do anything. I say secret. It's not much of a secret. Because they have a shoulder in place, so we just lose a bunch of life if we start activating it. That makes the Nyxos activations a lot easier. Alright, let's draw. So we get a 9. Uh, we can't do a lot with this. We need to put some stuff to play. Can at least try and get a uh, Priest of Titania online? Mm, I maybe shouldn't have cast the Elvish Mystic. Uh, yeah. So, with the Priest online, it is possible for us to win the game, it's just very difficult. The problem is they're just going to get to draw, like, a zillion cards for us. And among those zillion cards, there should be some removal spells. You're going to need one and two, it's probably one, pro probably going to one and three. Um, this, is to, this has to kind of go through. My response is here. And then get to Bowmaster the Priest. Yeah. Then can make five mana off the Nekthos. Pulls this away. Yeah. I mean, we're on nine. They're gonna be able to attack us for enough to put us to, to dead. Oh, I'm sure I can see that. All right. Yeah, rough rough, rough showing, I guess. Um, but we've been a bit unfortunate. All right. Uh, we have the crater hoof, but I'm almost tempted to keep this because we have. 
this sequence of things. Um, I'm going to keep this. The opener of um, Mana Elf into... I think I'm still going to leave with a death right here, just because... Um... Mm -hmm. It's a potential disruption piece to what our opponent's doing. I'm just trying to remember, what was the last Thoris that we played against? I don't know. The Attic Prison, okay. But Cooking Crispy. I'm going to play the, uh, the War Master here. And hopefully you start making tokens. Those with cord will get to do some good stuff. You may be able to cord for uh, priest here if we draw a land. And if they answer it. I uh, imagine this is like an amp raptor or something like that. This is looks to be Boros energy. Ooh, guide souls into Ragman. Guide souls into Soul Warden. Okay. So more towards the soul strand of things. We did get to draw this though, which means we can go green. Rolana we're off. Oh gosh. Yeah, that'll make a token. He'll gain some life. We'll shock this in and be able to cord for two next turn. Well, this turn. To be more specific. And then hopefully untapping with the Priest Titania, we should be able to do some cool stuff. Um, depending on how much damage we take, we'll see what they hit off this Amber Rapture as well. Uh, this was a Amulet, which is not the worst. Their amulet can find them other stuff. They're going to combat here. They can pay to make something an angel. They're not going to do that. We're going to go ahead and cord for two. Not three, two, please. That'll also make another elf token off the war master. We should be able to untap and drop crater hoof and feel pretty good. Um, in fact, we plan on a shaman, but we will just do. The problem with pain lands is that arena will decide that it does not want to tap them, and you will randomly find yourself unable to do things. Um, but hey, you may gain your life. I have a board. Raw. All right, we managed to even the score up. We get to well, not even up. We get two three. Uh, in the end with our elves. All right, elves and timeless. Um, we did okay. We went two and three. We gotta showcase like how fast that can be there. Um, but also at the same time, uh, some of the kind of just wildness of the timeless format in terms of decks we played against. Um, we got, we got, we got Belgian on turn three. Uh, we got scam reanimated into, into, into getting a bunch of stuff going up. We also, uh, the, the mono black necro deck is really, really sweet. Um, that one's really, really cool. And is also probably like not the greatest of matchups with Bowmasters. Masters. They have like infinite um, interaction and pieces of removal. And yeah, they managed to slow us down enough and land the ring. Um, Tunty ring, pretty good, turns out. Uh, if you're interested in Tunty rings, I have an Eldrazi, uh, well, I have a Tronless Tron video coming out. Um, I think just before this or just after this or sometime soon um and so yeah uh that'll be coming out as well sometime shortly yeah overall that's really solid i'm pretty happy with this build some of the numbers are like okay how many of these versus these uh lookout was incredible like would have been amazing in the game though versus the shield red um but we just couldn't keep a priest titania in play because they had access to infinite cards um i like three hours or a shepherd with the four quarter callings this is about what i'm looking at especially when you've got the natural order of creative hoof anyway um, two other armory seems great. One shaman, I'm not like 100% on. I think that if you're playing without Tyvar, that you should play it. I do. I will say that the Tyvar build with Priest Titania, in particular, is really, really good. It's what I prefer in historic, but with natural order, I don't think you really need it. And the Titan bars can be a bit of a liability, but it's another way to build it up. We should look at as well. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please do like, subscribe, share it around, all that algorithm stuff. Helps me out a ton. 
Makes me want to keep making videos. Makes me want to keep making better videos as well. And also, again, uh, streaming this over on Twitch.tv at the minute. Um, so check out the Twitch channel. There's a link in the description, but it is twitch.tv slash tr3vtcg. And uh, yeah, you can ask me questions, suggest stuff. Or watch me run it down in FPS games as well. That occasionally happens. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Peace out. Have a great day.